Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm really happy, I just checked today and I realized that we hit over 250 subscribers for the channel. So I'm really excited about that. Now it is my goal now to try to hit over a thousand subscribers. I don't really care about hitting a million or whatnot. I just kind of want to make the channel get better with time and kind of get more viewers and move forward. But to celebrate, I figured we'd take a look at my very first PVM. Now when I started the Sony File project a couple years ago, I had seen this on eBay listing locally. I had known nothing about professional video monitors at the time at all. I had just recently learned about the advantages of CRTs for retro game systems and other retro things such as VHSs and retro media. And when this showed up, I figured it was only about 20 bucks. I believe I got this for $25 after the bidding had ended, and it was a local pickup so there was no shipping charges or anything. I'd have to worry about getting any damage and shipping because I would be grabbing it myself. Now after so many years, which I can't believe it's already been so many, I believe I started this stuff back in 2016 or 17. So I figured we celebrate by taking an overview of this monitor. Now it's pretty simple on the front, you have the screen, you have the service light, which I have not made a tally thing, we'll go over that a little bit on the back. There's the power button, and then there's adjustments for volume. Now this does have mono volume, so there's only mono sound or one speaker. Don't expect stereo from this. You also have knobs to adjust the control, the phase, the chroma, the brightness, and the aperture of the unit. And then also small adjustable things to deal with the gain and base for the RGB or the red, green, and blue. This unit itself does need probably serviced. But right now, I am not going to do that. For those that don't know, my iron for soldering and stuff is kind of damaged. I'm going to look into getting a new one. And I believe I'll recap this unit once I do. And then over there, we have buttons to choose which input we have. There is an A and B button, slash RGB, slash YR, PRBR. That is the switch between RGB and component on the back. Then we have line in slash RGB. We have a button to switch if it syncs or not the signal. We also have a blue only button, which will pretty much make it look black and white to the human eye. And then under scan button, which we'll get to once I flip it around to the back. Then we have a horizontal vertical delay button. I haven't used that really for any of my projects. We're not going to go into too much detail. I looked it up and according to the use manual, which I actually picked up one. I enjoyed this monitor so much that I actually picked up one of the manuals for it. And it looks like it was copyrighted for 1991. Now this is a PVM8044Q. This manual does work for the 8041Q and the 8040. It's a pretty basic manual going over for everything that you would expect. I do wish I could find one of these. There was a mounting rack for two of these at once. If I ever find one that isn't destroyed or beat up, I'll definitely grab it. Especially since I actually picked up three more of these within varying amounts of condition. None of them are quite as in good condition as my first one. If we flip this to the bottom, we can actually see some information. This particular one was manufactured in 1997, actually. So this unit was in circulation for a good bit of time in the 90s, and I think one of them I have actually says it was made up until 2001. Take a look back to the back. And this is what I primarily use. I do not have any DC adapters or converters to use this. So I just use ACN into a standard outlet in the wall. Now there are two battery flaps down there. This was made with portability in mind and it was intended to carry this around for news and other things. So they made battery expansions just in case you didn't need an outlet and you could plug into other equipment while taking it out to record things. These units were actually made in Japan as you can see by the label down here. And there's a little remote port. Now I have not made any makeshift remote controls through this. You can wire things if you know which pin layout goes to what and turn on the service light and do other things but I don't have that. I also haven't been able to find a remote that matches this that's in my price range. As I mentioned before, there is an under scan on the front and over here, you can switch between the under scan being four by three or 16 by nine. So you could use a widescreen device on this and see the proper resolution. Or if you under scan it, like let's say you use a Super Nintendo and whatnot, that doesn't have an exact resolution that's four by three natively. You could view the whole thing on that. Up here we have YCN, which refers to like yellow or composite. So you have composite signals going in. This right here is S video, which separates the Luma and the chroma signals of composite video. So that gives you a sharper image. Right here is a BNC connection, which was one of the things that I first learned when I got this because I had no idea how I was gonna plug in my game systems. A BNC is a connection pretty much used on professional and security devices. 
not so much on consumer devices. Over here is an RCA, which you might be standard or used to or accustomed to. Those are pretty much common on any consumer device in the US. With this, if you get a little adapter, you can just adjust it and it will change it to an RCA. They're really cheap and on Amazon and everything for I think like five or 10 bucks right now. So don't worry about the price on that. It makes it rather easy. We also have a second line like that button on the front said, which has in and then also out. I didn't mention that with the previous inputs but you can loop the composite or the S video in and then loop it out to another monitor device such as a capture device, a second monitor, a regular size TV even. And down here is where we have the component slash the RGB inputs. Now component has a red, green, and a blue cord that run on it. I won't say the signal because I said it earlier and I commonly mess up saying that, but you can hook up standard component cables if you have an RCA to BNC adapter. There's also Mani audio on this so there's only one line in. I do have adapters that kind of just merge the two. Although it will still be mono, you would have both sound channels if it's something that only does stereo merged together. Now, if you were to use RGB though, you would need to use these. And then depending on which RGB it is, there is a sync signal. So this would do the red, the green, the blue, and then you would need another signal to sync it. I won't go over the exact details on syncing this or what the signal does. Just keep that in mind. And you can also put an output to sync it to other devices, depending on what kind of signal you're using. One last thing to mention on the back is there's a vertical hold adjust. Now, when I got this, I was kind of worried that things were messed up. And earlier this year, when I dug this back out to use it while moving stuff around, I was worried that this was damaged. Luckily, the vertical sync was just knocked slightly off. And you might have to adjust that if your signal does not seem to be proper or seems to be going up and down. The other side's basically the same. Nothing really fancy here. I do plan, once I get a soldered iron, to try to repair the other ones that I have, since I have three other ones of this unit that do have much more issues than this. Although this one does need adjusted and calibrated at this point. And there you have it. There's a basic overview of my very first PVM. I hope you enjoyed it. I won't display an actual use of it in this video. I just kind of wanted to look at it. Plus, I have multiple videos where I've just used this. This is my primary use for almost any video I make, just because of its size, portability and the fact that it has multiple inputs. I hope if you have interest in seeing how this looks that you look back at some of the older videos and kind of get an idea of how good it is because it's much sharper than your standard consumer set. I believe most consumer sets were maybe 150 scan lines or lines that the CRT draws the gun on and this is more like 450. Don't quote me on that exactly because I'm kind of making this quick to get it out by the end of the month. But I just wanted to share with you guys this important thing. This has helped me so much on learning about retro gaming video signals with different video signals in general with analog and kind of pushed me forward to learn more about AV in general. It's hard to believe that I started this project over two or three years ago, even. It's the fact that it's been over five years is kind of crazy. And I really hope that moving forward, we work on better stuff and you all become entertained with the videos that I make. I have multiple projects I'm going to work on now, but most of them are delayed until further notice. I will make a video by the end of each month this year and keep that goal in mind. But I hope if you are interested, you continue watching this channel, you comment, subscribe. And if for some reason YouTube goes down, we find another platform I can share all this stuff with you guys. Thank you so much again, everybody that's made this possible and helped us hit over 200 subscribers and over 250 subscribers. Also, thank you for all of my friends and family who have supported me on this channel and through this endeavor the last couple years. Without them, I don't think I would get this far. And until next time, I hope everybody enjoys. Stay safe out there and expect another PlayStation 2 based video soon. Take care.